It is very convincing when you first look at it. Here is Lozano, supposedly leaving the PLC building after the assassination attempt, but look, his face is always down, away from the surveillance cameras, right? His back is turned, his collar's up. Now look at the street. Same deal. Could be Lozano, but who knows? Now, the parking garage. We're on his back the whole time. It's like he knows where the cameras are. Exactly. And the next time we get a good look at him, He's crossing from the car to the storage facility. Right, there's no way to tell. Right. So when did they make the switch? Here is the footage from the PLC building after the shooting. And now this is the next morning, 20 hours and 17 minutes after that. Long after the building has been cleared, long after the suspect has been shot dead, Someone leaves the building. Would you like me to zoom in? Please. Lozano never left the building that day. He waited till the coast was clear. He left the next day. So it's true. Lozano was alive, sir. And Agent Wells was absolutely positive. Yes, sir. The man the FBI killed was a decoy and was willing to sacrifice his life to help Lozano escape. Sacrifice his life for what? And why? How many more of them are out there? Good news? We got a hit on the dead guy's prints. Desmond Lingarth, ATF, picked him up in 2005 on a gun possession charge. I just sent you the file. This guy fell off the grid six years ago. Before that, he was Army Infantry. His last known employment was a small arms instructor. For, for Browning Reed. Financial forensics did a full workup on him. He took out a loan for his mother's house in 2003. You know who co-signed that loan? The CEO of Browning Reed. Patrick Lloyd? Yeah. I'll be back. Where are you going? 